Amazon's Ocelot chip, with unique cat qubit technology, is a departure from conventional approaches, offering a more efficient path to fault-tolerant quantum computing. Let's analyze how they've innovated, their unique architecture, and their published results. Then, we'll compare Ocelot to Microsoft's Majorana 1 chip and Google's Willow chip in order to predict who will win the quantum race. At the heart of Amazon's breakthrough lies the cat qubit, named after Schrodinger's famous thought experiment. Unlike traditional qubits that store information in two-level systems, like the spin of an electron, cat qubits encode quantum information in superpositions of many photons. The most revolutionary aspect of cat qubits is their asymmetric approach to air protection. Quantum computers suffer from two main types of errors, bit flips, where a zero becomes a one or vice versa, and phase flips, which disrupt the quantum interference patterns essential for computation. Conventional qubits are equally vulnerable to both error types, requiring extensive and complex error correction. Amazon's cat qubits fundamentally change this equation. They use a clever mechanism called two-photon dissipation that actively stabilizes the qubit states, making them exponentially resistant to bit flip errors. This natural noise bias, which provides strong protection against one error type, but vulnerability to another, allows Amazon to focus their error correction efforts solely on protecting against phase flips, dramatically reducing the resources needed for fault-tolerant quantum computing. Okay, that got a bit technical, so let's imagine this. Amazon is building a bridge across a dangerous river. It is using a clever new material that's inherently resistant to damage from rain, but it's still vulnerable to wind. This allows them to focus their structural strength against wind damage only, saving considerable resources. The bridge uses standard construction techniques, but arranges materials in a novel way. Let's talk architecture. Amazon's Ocelot processor creates a logical qubit using just nine physical components. Five cat qubits arranged in a line, plus four helper qubits. This arrangement forms what's called a concatenated bosonic code. Traditional approaches require a two-dimensional grid of qubits. As the air protection increases, the required grid must grow in both dimensions. With Amazon's approach, they only need to extend in one dimension. This efficiency advantage is substantial. Amazon achieved a logical error rate of 1.65% with just nine qubits. Comparable performance in traditional systems would require substantially more qubits. So who will win the quantum race? Let's imagine three different companies are building bridges across a dangerous river. We just covered how Amazon is doing it, yet Microsoft and Google are taking different approaches. Microsoft is aiming to use a perfect material, one that's completely immune to all weather. Their bridge would be virtually indestructible. They've shown promising material samples in the lab, but haven't built a complete bridge yet. The material is extremely difficult to produce and requires exotic manufacturing techniques. Google is using conventional materials, but with comprehensive reinforcements against all weather types. Their bridge is the most mature design and has already proven to withstand real storms, but requires significantly more material and maintenance. They've already built several successful bridges, but at considerable expense. So, who will win the race to quantum supremacy? In the short term, one to three years, Google's Willow has the edge. Their approach is well understood, and they've already demonstrated the most impressive technical achievement, a logical qubit that outlasts its physical components. Despite requiring more resources, they're most likely to demonstrate practical quantum algorithms first. Yet, in the medium term, three to seven years, Amazon's Ocelot approach will become increasingly competitive if they can scale as projected. Their resource efficiency means they could potentially implement larger algorithms, ones that Google simply can't due to hardware limitations. The key question is whether they can maintain their error suppression advantages as they scale to multiple logical qubits. And yet, in the long term, say seven years and onwards, Microsoft's approach could be the wild card that wins the game. If they can definitively prove and harness topological protection in their system, they could potentially leapfrog both competitors. However, this represents the highest technical risk. So, who will win the quantum race? All of them. They may all have their moments, and each model will likely prove useful to the respective company. And perhaps a breakthrough from another company altogether could be announced tomorrow and ultimately prove the most stable, scalable, and efficient. 
If you want to dive deeper into the details of Microsoft's Majorana 1 and Google's Willow chip, this episode right here will get you all caught up in a hurry. The tech world is evolving at a rapid pace, so stay up to date by subscribing to Plasma Pause TV. I think we got it.